Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting Premier Undercast from me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hero of Psych, Defender of the Fatherland. Welcome, one, welcome all to another exciting episode with me, your host. Also, quick note of those who keep asking for the intro. No, I'm not going to make someone because I didn't make the intros. I don't make them. That's not exactly my forte, so not happening. Just a quick note to those who keep asking. Again, gone because I couldn't use the music anymore, and you know, again, I can't. You know, do anything about that. So there you go. So stop asking about it, and you know, learn to live with it. Anyways, we've got here in the south, crazy Brit fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland, taking on the role here of the Speerverband Spielmann versus the North. We got here Overlord fighting for the Soviet Union, socialism, and Stalin. The tenth motorized rifle division here, attempting to exploit a gap made previously in the day, with the Speerverband Spielmann here being rushed in to try and. You know, close the gap until proper reinforcements can arrive. We got mobile defense, Ostrom and Jaeger infantry with Panzerfaust infantry and mine bulletins versus Lend Lease, Serve Reserve Army, and Parts and Tactics with grenade, Parts and Bulletins, and Infantry. Hang on, let's bring the cat out. She wants to go out to sit a bit lighter, and doesn't. She's staying at the window. Anyways, conscripts moving up. So we got a conscript maximum start here for Overlord versus Grenadier MG42 there for Crazy Bread. Going in there a bit aggressively, current point here in the center with the MG42. More Grenadiers on the way there for Crazy Bread. So, slight move ahead there, center point being secured. And grab the fuel there. Grab the fuel there. Pretty standard stuff so far. Grenadiers almost done. Pioneer sending out here. So what will Overlord be planning here? I mean, there you go, second Maxim. He's going to be going heavy there on the Maxim machine guns, a rather older weapon there within the Russian army. In fact, was first sort of instituted under the Tsarist regime. Hence why it's on wheels, partly because back then the army was very much football. And so having the machine gun on wheels made it much more easy to cut about. Grenadiers there, there's engineers advancing here. Maxim turning back to deal with the Grenadiers. Getting a few kills there with an MD42 aggressive supporting, and there we go. Almost got the call from there. We go the Maxim Dust push back here. Crazy bit a bit from it. Maxim being moved over there. Engineers taking minor losses. Maxim moving over there. We got the second Maxim on the way there for Overlord. So we've got a bit of movement here. There we go. Cat finally made up his mind. Maxim there being engaged for the MD42. Shots fired. And we got a bit of movement over here as well. Constantly advancing up there. Gonna do something in bay. And there you go. Cat finally left. Damn cat. And there we go. Gonna try to advance with this case. Getting suppressed by a second Maxim carrying the first Maxim. A nice move there by Overlord, who's also gone for partisan tactics. We haven't seen partisan tactics actually in quite some time, obviously. Teams from the likes having overshadowed them, but uh, in this case, Overlord clearly a favour of other approaches calling in here the ever devious partisans with the PPSH 41s, grenades, and axes to mines. Goodness, we can sort of cover against this. Consequence moving up here as well. Many mods have been planned for Overlord? Looks like not. Back here, nothing further going on. We've got three gun at one in four, two, one pioneer squad here versus Overlord's conscript parts and machine guns and engineers. The Russians fired it sort of front. Halfway through the water around 1943, replaced at least worked to replace it. Now, of course, with a machine gun, another one which also, by the way, was on wheels. That's a little fun fact there. Overall, they would still primarily use the maximum since that's what they had the most off. And again, some people, you know, when you try and discuss this, seem to just have the idea, you know, once a new weapon came out, then everybody just got the new weapon. That's not how logistics works, people. Uh, it's not how logistics works. Anyway, it's got people there, oh, partnering up here to deal with the Grenadiers, cutting them down slowly. Bit of harassment here behind the lines. In fact, here there's a great idea for part, uh, P Crazy Bird to up here later on an S minefield, because an S minefield no retreat path is really nasty. At the same time, the Overlord here is dragging his opponent's car point with the partner squad infiltrated from nearby. Nasty work there, and also in part, you know, what the parts are there supposed to be doing with. It's a nasty, but nice work there from Overlord. And again, in theory, again, Crazy Bird are doing the same, but uh, so far. No s man's ready. He should lay down an S-Man field right here again. He could, you know, wipe conscripts there for example with the pioneers, so they might start my chance, but uh, 
got fingers paying attention and so doesn't get the wipe there but even then just catching up a lot of units on a treat there with their smites would have been uh, quite potent. When there's a ting loss from the Partisans there, I think they popped off a good grenade there, leaving several Germans quite dead. Leaving Crazy Bird now, in fact, in a pretty bad position, actually called it on Mortar here. Perhaps expecting an opponent again, going heavy maximum spam, thus getting up the Mortar counter. That when instead now finding an opponent was all of a sudden pulling out the dagger and going heavy on Partisans as well. So all of a sudden, Crazy Bread is fighting a bit of a curious force composition. Maxims and Partisans. That might be giving Crazy Bread here a bit of a hard time trying to figure out what to do. we got Medic Lunkers on the way here. No mines for being made down here by Overlord. He's moving down to grab the fuel point here. Up there, point being secured by the Partisans. Mortar they need to be pulled back. Bit exposed. But getting some good hits there. Wiping out the Maxim. That's definitely a good hit there for Crazy Bread and the Sparefair Bande. Took some reinforcing healing. Mortar makes his way back. we got to take off there for Crazy Bread. And the few pawn they almost secured here by the partisans with their submachine guns. Many Soviet partisans were in fact just Soviet troops and sort of you know, scattered and sort of hit, hidden during uh, the initial parts of Operation Barbarossa. And thus they formed the core of the partisan groups. And thus in that regard, you know, be reasonably well equipped and of course uh, already have military experience. But of course a nice chunk of them would also be Soviet paratroopers from failed Soviet paratrooper operations. Where then of course once they failed, scattered in and joined the partisans as well. It's a little fun fact there. Then DC versus Partisans there. Quick grenade again. Looking pretty bad here for Crazy, but again, the Partisan move from Overlord proving to be really dear. God damn, that cat already wants to go inside again. Hang on. Why is acting like that today? My apologies, dear viewers. My apologies. Cats can be fickle. But there's more to moving up there, and we've got here. Met, like to make a nice company going up there for Crazy Bread. This company is now moving up much more focused. That's probably also one of the weaker things to early on. I mean, he was actually scattered across the map there, which overall makes the pardons a lot more effective. The pardons are really good just hitting an ex or extended opponent, you know, hurting them that way. Now, Crazy Bread is a lot more focused, so the pardons should be uh, to an extent less effective. But there you go, Contra straight up. No Molotovs here, though, of course, the map trying to bait Crazy Bread into things. Got them. In this case, though, no such luck. Contra taking heavy casualties as he charged and got guarded here by German fire. But there you go. Another party unit appears here, right behind Crazy Bread. There you go, pushing back the MD42. Once more, Overlord relying here on the nastiness of the party and doctrine again. Not a lot of players utilizing, so again, that probably also gives a bit of extra edge because, you know, how do you then deal with it if you don't remember how to deal with it? So, nasty work there by Overlord. Nasty work. And we got take up here for Overlord as well. You could go for a half check fast. You could also try and go for T70 down the road. Maximum setting up here to cover the retreat of the Pardons. In this case, recruited by some engineers. Crazy Brett following up with a light armored car. My troops are healing, reinforcing. Maximum standing about there. Now, the fun fact about Pardons is there are numerous Pardons groups and they weren't always, you know, too well at working together. Something which the Germans, of course, tried to exploit as many times as possible versus their opponent. And, of course, the Pardons groups themselves would also fight against each other for different reasons. So, that's a little thing there also to keep in mind. And generally, the Soviets sort of did away with all the non Soviet Partisans as they advanced, since they just generally didn't like those and didn't you know, want to deal with them afterwards. So they were generally sort of disposed off. <laughs> That's another little fun detail there on Partisans. Constantly moving ahead here, making all the way back here. Troops reinforcing, healing. A piney surrounds. We can see again, Crazy Bread, very quick to uh, spread out. Again, he's a very aggressive player, but again, it does make him somewhat more vulnerable to a good Partisan hit here and there. Comes to the versus Gunnadis in the far west, Gunnadis need to retreat, but otherwise again he's just pushing it aggressively using the 2 to 2 ult here to try and you know, do as much damage, exploit any gaps and punish Overlord for his crimes against Germany. There you go, Maxim Corp and MD4, 2 to 2 moving in as well. T70 on the way though for Overlord, that's going to give Crazy Bits 2 to 2 uh, quite a headache then, will need to be dealt with swiftly and violently. And he's moving up here, mine right in the middle of the road. Good spot there by Overlord. And there we go, Luke looks as self killing Paul Jurgen in the process. Alongside himself, of course. T70 almost done. We can see the 2 2 rushing it. Crazy Bird is apparently not expecting a T70 at all here. He really wants that maximum depth, but again, he's going to leave himself vulnerable here to the 2 T70, which now strikes. Fighter to 45 minute gun there at the 2 2 2 strong Lama. And there we go. 
already down to less than half health, and he's not going to make it out of there. Going to lose Need to Retreat as well. Still, he made some progress here. I mean, that seems to be sort of one of the weaknesses of the Path of Doctrine. It's not very good at holding ground. Again, doesn't have a lot of influence. He has got the Maxims, and they can, of course, be out manoeuvred. So, in that regard, there's a bit of weakness there for Overlords. That Overlord are oh, crazy, but he seemingly has thrown in on. But there's just one big flaw, which is the T70. Again, he wasn't prepared for that himself. So in this case, he's going to rely on Pumas here to deal with it. He's spare for Banda being able to round up some heavy armored cars from a nearby reconnaissance unit to that way try and deal with any Russian light vehicles themselves. So he just needs the fuel. Would have been helpful to see doing the aggressive advance. He actually managed to lay down some mines so that way, you know, slow down any sort of counter attack from Overlord. But uh, obviously, there's a lot going on there for Crazy Bet, so probably not. But I'll let T7 here going wild. And Molten needs to get out of there before the T-70 tears it apart. From these squad moving up there, Pantafas at Savedi, and there we go. Might just be able to get it off there. There we go. Damn, it's ending on the T-70. Down to half health. We got troops attacking here. MG-42 needs to fall back. Too many Russians. Not enough bullets. Back here, healing reinforcement going. We got Panzer Gadis there for crazy, but he's still some time off from a poom, but still has resources for that. A Panzer Gadis escort, I think, would be an excellent choice versus the Partisans, but also the few country escorts remaining. So, really good choice there by Crazy Bet. Really good choice containing the overall situation. And there we go, we got the Puma out here for Crazy Bread. The 234 2. Gadis hauling themselves ahead here. Almost got the maximum there. And there you go, going straight for the cutoff point. Again, he's trying to just slow down any tech from overload as much as possible. And for that, just try and hit the cutoff point. Passman through the south. Puma waiting for some infantry support. That is, I think, a very good idea. Gonna these Panzer as they're arriving. Max may have a second these, but he has managed to nonetheless once more cut off overload from his fuel point as well. So good work there by Crazy Bread. And the spare for Banda. 10th motorized travel division are doing what he can here. And there we go. Panzer going to be advancing here for Crazy Bread. The assault rifles making short work of the Partisans there, breaking them up. Going to be advancing through again, maintaining position around the calf point. He's really intent there, just denying Overlord as many resources as possible, which makes a lot of sense. He's sending in the Puma though, he needs to be careful. Of course, there's A anti tank raids to worry about, but of course, Overlord has gone for Partisans, which means he has to worry about Partisan tank hunters as well for his Puma. Right here. Crazy Brett needs to be very, very cautious here. Again, otherwise, he could easily lose the Puma here to Overlord's arm. Anti tank hunters. There you go. Pantrix appearing right there for a house. Shots fine. Need to pull back the Puma. Need to pull back the Puma. Oh dear, he's moving ahead. Flying to anti tank grenade. Oh dear. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. Puma almost down comes there, being dealt with by the Panzer Grenadiers, but he's trying to pull it back. Problem is, there's houses here, and his opponent has, of course, gone partisans. Another anti tank Panzer squad could hit him. He needs to keep infantry close by and get some pioneers down. In fact, he needs to keep away from any houses, but oh no. There we go. Second partisan tank hunter squad appears with a rocket and knocks out the Puma. Quite a loss there for Crazy Brett. Didn't get the T70, instead, lost a Puma. Quite a resource loss here for the Germans, but in the other hand, he just keeps down the car upon there. He's trying to stall and delay and buy time for himself. So in that regard, Crazy Bread here has got some idea what to do. We got more pioneers away for Crazy Bread here. We got finding their pants there, pushing back the parts and punishing them, destroying German property. Halt und get back here so we can kill you properly. There you go, going on straight to the T70, feeding actually quite a bit of experience. Be careful about that. More pioneers are running for Crazy Bread. T-70 moving ahead there. And these got scrimmaging as well. Most of the engaged by the Partisans. Almost wiping out the mortar crew there with their nasty submachine guns. There you go. Double Maxims engaging them. MD-402 there. Not doing too well there. Panzer's and these being pushed back here with the T-70 in the west. Crazy Bread's front line in fact now utterly collapsing again. There's been absolutely no mining from him. That's definitely, I think, a bit of a mistake there by uh, Crazy Bread. Would have done for that, I think, several times from some mines in there versus opponents looks like his mortar's completely bugged up at least for now that is some um, pretty bad luck there for crazy bread for his mortar to be rendered uh, largely unusable and again usually there will be something happening and then it'll sort of just pop back to the rest but so far though it's not looking like it pioneers there getting to work they're burning down their houses 
Burning down the house. The enemy has broken our supply lines. Reinforcing and there we go. Ah. Uh, they go almost got the house. They go teasing parts moving ahead. We got conditions to catch in there. We got mines being attempted on the craft once well there by Overlord. Nice work there, pioneers. I've rushed off. There we go. There we go. Takes a bit of maneuvering about, but there you go. The mortar is finally set up. And good to go again for Crazy Bread. The Medias are getting locked. to help deal with the rations. He's not getting any actual more infantry again. He's just relying primarily on uh, Partisans and Maxims and the T70 here versus Crazy Bread. There you go. Partisans up close. Mines laid down. In this case, spotted by the pioneers. Can these punches in And now the mortar is where we should deal with it. For some reason, they're caught up there. And there you go. Partisans push back. Can these on the for the T70 light tank? Ah! Oh! Jazz is the upgrade with that machine gun. Moments after the T-70 wipes them out. Quite a loss there for Crazy Bit. There go grenades off as well. Good use of grenades there by, by uh, Overlord. People tend to neglect, I think, the overall utility of grenades in this game, particularly the lower ones, because again, they just figure, you know, well, it's not a bundle grenade, or it's not, you know, the commando grenade. Lastly, it must be bad, but actually pretty good. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They are still good. There you go, Pioneer's rushing. I need to be careful for the Puma. I need to be careful. Ah, oh, shite, Too close again. He really wants that T-70 depth, but this is actually, you know, in Overlord's favor because, again, it's causing Crazy Bread to just make all of these really, really short-term calculations. In this case, we got both parts and tank had a squad coming in, and they're going to finish off the Puma. So another big loss here for Crazy Bread. Again... He's clearly frustrated by that T-70. In this case, Overlord was able to punish for him quite heavily. Still, Crazy Bit is doing some damage to Overlord, but he's very much in the defense again. He's struggling here to keep up with Overlord. So, again, just Overlord's really vicious use of partisans. Really, absolutely nasty and vicious use of partisans. There you go, the pioneers are back at work. You know, when I joined the army, I didn't imagine I'd be burning down houses somewhere on the eastern front. I'm glad I joined the army. I used to be a pyromaniac before I joined the army anyway, so this works out quite fine for me. And we got here, hey, you cats going up. Good, good. Doesn't want to pull back troops, so again, he heals at the front line. Maintaining momentum that way. Good work there by Crazy Bread. Good work. That okay, reinforcement healing going on. No, take up again. He's been spending now a lot of resources just on Pumas. And again, he's been struggling with fuel as well. So he can't easily just take up by now. On the other hand, Overlord's got plenty of resources and could very well take up ahead here of Crazy Bread. Another light machine appears for the Grenadiers. There we go. One house is on fire. Need to move on to the next one there. Perhaps we need to retreat. It would be a shame to lose them here. Be a big shame for Crazy Bit to lose them. There we go. Moving on to the next house again. He really does not want those parts to appear more again. Pack 40 around there for Crazy Bit as he knows he needs one to tank. And again, he's probably worried about Overlord bringing up Morama, but of course, also just that T70, which is now Veteran T3. And the Veteran T3 T70 is very lethal. Pack 40 almost done there for Crazy Bread. Then this advancing. We actually got a smoke screen there on the maximum from Crazy Bread. Good work there, actually. Good work. Negating here Overlord's Maxim and allowing to grab the center victory point. And in this case, if you want to move, deal with the T70, it's going to get within range of the Panzerfaust as well. So that also works out for Crazy Bit, really. Though sadly, his pack 40 is only just ready. But, you know, again, it's in Yumpers, they're doing a bit to cover up as well, doing some damage, gaining Veteran T2. Almost lost the Convier Squad, but he is able to push back the T70 for a bit here. He's continued burning down there. Crazy Bit enacting his own little personal Nero doctrine or decree. And it's been gunned down by the Maxim Pants, and they're pushing him to wipe them out. Down here in the south, anti tank part securing territory has actually lost his only country squad, which means he actually has no regular infantry. He's relying largely on irregular infantry, and that way you're going to try and hold the line. And yeah, they're not very good at defense. They're not very good at defense. They're very much more offensive infantry, so at some point here, it could give him some problems. Still. Overlord's got most of the map here. He could still laying down a lot more mines with his Parsons. That's basically the best they can do in terms of defense. And there you go. Overlord has taken up, calling in here nearby independent tank brigade to support the 10th motorized rifle division. 
T fed four seven six is running. There go parts of range range and MD four two immediately pinned down here. Negative cover. Let's see two MD forty two can very quickly pin such things there. But the Pentacles themselves are being pinned here. It would be a huge loss for him if he lost them there. And there you go. Pack 40 pushing out the T's into the go. We got more units pushing through here. But they continue to be being pinned down. And there you go. Second house is on fire. Moving on to the next one. Crazy Bread. Smokes in here on the MD42. Gets us over the MD42. T fed for some six almost done there for Crazy Bread. Need to put. Oh, there you go. Grenade off from the Partisans on the MD42. Again, good consistent usage there, and we've got here the T-34-6 out for Overlord. The is dealing with advancing in years, kind of more moving up. Could go another light machine gun team there to help deal with all these troops, which only give me a further edge long term. And there you go, another LMG-42. Of course, there's now a T-34-6 to deal with, and of course, he's only got a pack 40. And he doesn't have any doctrinal tech, and, well, non-doctrinal tech. He's only got the doctrine, like I said, Command Tanker or Puma. And neither of them are really going to help us, the T-34-76, a lot. But it does have now double packs. Definitely a necessity in these trying times. Pack forward, they're getting good hit on the T-34-76. Second one, also, and there you go. Panzer Vars as well. Quickly leaving Overlord's T-34-76 in a very bad spot. And go moving on to the third and final house here. And to tank Panzer's flanking in. And there's not really much for them to sort of really do. Just the primarily anti-tank teams. And there you go, we got a command tank summoned here by Crazy Bread of the Fields Panzerwagen. Of course, Overlord could use to getting up more T-34 some sixes on HD5 right now. He could also go for Kachusha. I mean, he basically, Overlord's got a ton of options here versus Crazy Bread. He just, I think, needs more infantry to help hold the ground better. I mean, at this point, going for a special weapon command just for the troops, I think, would be a very solid choice here for him. There you go, one part of squad, and there you go. The rest crumble away as well. As they're going to disappear into flank. Second, T-54 on the way there for Overlord. So he does aim for more armor here. Not a bad idea as long as he actually flanks a bit with it. I mean, he's got a lot of forces. In fact, got a lot of troops that are very good at flanking. So he pulls up a really good flank. He could crash Crazy Bread in one decisive move. No, he counters it for Katusha instead. Katusha Rocket Lord. So mine goes off there. Two more is dead. Casualties are certainly piling up for Crazy Bread. Though certainly Overlord is not having an easy time of it either. And there we go. Shed catches on fire with a small house, I suppose. So only took him quite a bit of while they're lighting all of those things on fire though. Took him quite a while. Panzer's on their own, halfway to Vetsni 3. Standing at the ready. Pani is setting out. And there you go, T's in going straight for it. Half well, it's already Vetsni 3 actually. Parts is following up here, no mines going down there, and here in the west, Pioneers vs. Parts are there inside the house. Got the command tank moving up with a 75mm howitzer, if you will, or light infantry gun, by the way. And you're going to do some damage to this high explosive shells. Parts under fire, we got maximum up in the Panzer IV here, the Fields Panzer Wagen. T-54-76 moving out again, having finally fixed up after that catastrophic damage versus Crazy Bird's anti-tank front previously. Well, Pioneer's trying to arrive here, but the Maxim is still a problem there for his Pioneers. Centerwards, though, he's got, again, a quite sudden anti-tank front, but with this, he choose a rocket launch so he can actually break it up, splitting up Crazy Bird's center, wiping out an MD-42. Quite a series of losses there for Crazy Bird, quite a series of losses. Since in particular, but there was a vets and machine gun. But there you go, commanding a lot of trouble. No infantry port, no screen. In this case, quickly ambushed by Overlord's tank hunters and a T-34-6. Denying Crazy Bear's command tank, which ultimately didn't have that much down anyway. So in this regard, Crazy Bear so far spent a lot of resources on, you know, doctrinal vehicles that really haven't done that much for him. And now Overlord, he's getting extra aggressive here versus Crazy Bear. Sending the T-70 into his opponent's space to get us some hits here. Nasty work there, further pressure and crazy bread, and might also do some paranoia. Good pencil first there from the gun these does manage to get away there. And you for two blasting away there, got two can push back. Pioneers rushing for the victory point here. 
back down here, troops healing reinforcing. No tech up there for Crazy Brett. Uh, probably another command tank at this rate. A uh, lot though, we're probably going for more tanks at this stage. Honey has been guarded here by the Partisans slowly, but there you go. MD42 finally able to suppress the bastards. But ends up retreating anyways? How strange. Very risky move that. I mean, if Overlord were to call in the Partisan Squad right here, he could just quickly wipe out both pack forces. But in this case, Crazy, but I think, realizes he's acting in a bad position, slightly spits him up at the very least. But even then, there's a high likelihood of losing at least one of the pack 40s to Overlord there. And we got Ostrom here calling up the reserves now here for, well, from supply companies and the likes to further fill out the ranks. But it certainly gives him just overall a lot more infantry than his opponent. I mean, he's got two kind of these squads, two Ostrom squads, and one Panzer squad, but he's going to burn him. With just party. So in that regard, Crazy Bit uh, does have an infantry advantage over his opponent. The problem, of course, Overlord's got the armor advantage. And he's also got support weapons. But again, you can sort of, you know, work it correctly. Crazy Bit could very well sort of grind down Overlord because, again, the Pardons are not very good frontline fighters. But there you go, Pardons hold here by the M42. Moving up here, right next to mine. And there you go, straight into it. T-34 bursting through the German lines. One kill, veteran T-1. Two kills. Crazy bit, not far off from another command tank here. Pack following down to deal with that. We got two pushing for the center season moving up as well. Complete chaos here for Crazy Brett. And there you go, looks like it's going to T-Sim is going to try and flank through. Nope, it's going to make another base attack there. I wonder where the other pack 40 is. It's back here for healing reinforcement. Not bad. Idea just bad timing here, of course, with the armor assault went off in space. Almost got the maximum there again. Pants being suppressed here as well. Ostrom suppressed as well. Finding away everything they can at the Marxist. And there you go. T Fed 4 trying to flank from the south, but ultimately doesn't pull through with it. Quickly put backs off here. Gang is pushing through a T and push back for the other pack 40. Ostrom hitting with the pads up close, pushing them away. And we got the T Fed 4 playing firing support there as well. Oh, action going on here. There you Hectic here. And there you go, another command take available from taking losses there from the T Fed Force from 6. Other T Fed Force rolling back. And there we go, second command tank out. Another command tank. There we go, okay, choose your rocket launcher. Striking down rockets of doom. Against Crazy Bird Center Tank once again, trying to silence them, snuff them out like candles that could knock out his tanks, which again means they aren't very much candles, but you know, metaphors. Come on, tank moving ahead here, other T-34 running back. We can see actually Overlord, despite having overwhelming arm advantage, isn't really utilizing it much. But again, that might also be because he doesn't have anything to really work it with. So, I mean, again, we can sort of see there are some issues here for Overlord as the game progresses. And again, his force composition, while initially very aggressive, sort of lacks in. Some element as the game goes on, and so crazy bit by just stalling out Overlord might be able to actually beat Overlord here because, again, long term Overlord's force composition is just too weak. They need to get that command tank out. They can't. Ah, Pet 40 opening up, covering up. T Pet down to half health, but he's almost lost the command tank already. Needs to be more careful with those command tanks, crazy bit. Those don't come cheap, you know. Oh, Alba's lost it here. Parts and taking losses. Wiped, Panther's Rick drop. And we got, m ooh, he's using counter-attack tactics. That's pretty great. Rather than use us, but we've got parts and sweeping through the south, pushing back the Ostrom. But now Crazy Bird's acting control of most of the map here, grabbing Panther's Rick's points. And making use of this one, actually. He's on, in fact, I think, I don't think he's used Panther's Rick's but he's actually made use of the entire doctrine. Overlord has more or less also done the same. He just needs to use Mark Vehicle here. Got a fresh Parton Tank Hunter unit out here though for Overlord. In the south there go Parts being behind and getting up on Crazy Bet support ones that push them back in the front line are much more exposed. Right, we need off. There we go. Pants, they almost been wiped out. 
And they've got annihilated. That's actually quite expensive there for Overlord. I mean, that's from the Sony Man car. And again, we can sort of see again, there's a bit of an issue here for Overlord longer term. Again, they're just not very good frontline infantry. And again, does mean that crazy bait, you know, again, it's, you know, protects the fight and sort of gets better frontline troops and all that and just gets into better positions. You can just bleed out Overlord and crush him that way. So Overlord needs to bring up some proper infantry. Again, conscripts or penal troopers. And that way, you know, begin pressuring uh, crazy bait. At this stage, so I'd probably recommend penal troopers. So that way, carry the fight, of course, supporting them with the tanks. But we'll have to see what Overlord does. But there you go, hunting down the pack 40 again. Oh, crazy bit oh, extending them a bit and could get punished for it quite badly. He's already lost one pack 40. The dirt hasn't seemed to have been stolen, so it's just been wiped, I think. All destroyed. No tech up there, though, for crazy. We've got the command tank moving ahead here. Did make it out of there alive, though it was very, very close. Almost got the T7 light tank there, almost got it. Shoot, Ludwig! Yeah, we did it! I did it, Ludwig! You didn't. And there go Flank Honey's in, blitzkrieging about here. Almost got the Panzer Mortified. Almost got the Max in there, but it is striking off most of the damage. And there you go, Mort hit then proceeds to almost wipe the entire maximum crew there. Quite a loss there then. For Overlord, Chief of the, the command tank, he's trying to rise and he's trying to get it with machine guns. Patrick from the nearby house, though, he's gonna force the command tank to pull back. But in a matter of moments, again, Overlord regained all crazy bread gained there in a the matter of moments. So, some really heavy swinging back and forth. Then he's just down to 60 victory points, too. Now, Panther first, Panther six, back forward level to T-34s, down to half health there. Overlord, please go for a lot of tanks right now, but uh. There's nothing going on except we got more spy network there. And this ring in there, 22 kills. And another Katrusha Bowers here again, trying to silence that pack 40. The biggest threat is T34 76 is at the moment. There we go, Veterans 1 and the other T34 76. But uh, no more tanks. He's got plenty of fuel, but not enough manpower. And that regard again, the parts end up actually again. If you go from this, the primary part of your force, a big manpower bleed. As they again die quickly and thus need constant reinforcement. So we can sort of see again, Overlord's uh, force composition is giving him increasing the to head as the game progresses. Now they can't attack tactic and allowing to quickly seize the victory points here again. He doesn't have to decap in quickly, but once they've been rendered neutral, he can very quickly seize it. Ooh, going to drum the Patrick for the Partisans. And there we go. Again, he's got 45 points left, so he can't really afford to lose even a second in these things. And that's losing counterattack tactics. It's a pretty good move there by Crazy Bread. Third T Fade Force and Sixth Death Overlord. We are Bring up a lot of those tanks. And there you go, Panzer on the run there with the Panzer. We've got Panzer that's trying to wipe them out. Eventually, 3 10 kills for Germany. At the same time, push up for the Sydney by a lot of Maxims, Partisans, and the T 34s. Can he get it? Yes, yes, wipe the Partisans there. Big loss for Overlord. Third T 34 almost done. That, of course, means he can sort of be more aggressive. He's enough, though. He's not using his T 34s, you know, very confidently. I mean, Crazy Bit doesn't have a lot of anti tanks when I mean, he's used them correctly and aggressively, you know, quickly, I think. Oh, well, Crazy Bit, but. Um, he seems a bit awfully cautious with them. Panzer going to deal advancing into line of the two T-54s. With the third one rhyming, there we go. Almost wiped the entire unit leaving behind only Ludwig. There we go. Another Puma now. Again, no take up for Crazy Bread. No further take up. He's just trying on the doctor now, which was a T-54 heavy opponent. He's rather risky. I mean, all he's got then is always the Pack 40 and the command tank. Almost got it there. Almost got it. That's only two, two, so will be quite a loss there for uh, Overlord to lose it there. Pack 40, Veteran one could go for tight weak point there. He's going for it, he's going for it. So heat rounds. There we go, stunned. Puma there flying away with his 50 minute gun, getting a penetrating hit there. Pack 40 being overwhelmed though by Russian tanks. Need to get someone to recruit fast. And of course, oh, doesn't try to wreck it actually. He might be worried there's another Pack 40 there from Crazy Brett then. Otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty sure we just gone for it and just wrecked the Pack 40, denying it to Crazy, but instead of abandoning it, because, you know, an abandoned Pack 40 will very quickly be crewed. In particular, get with a player, you know, who's got Osthoven. I mean, he's not going to waste a moment on it. The 
But a lot of aggressive back and forth here between these two players. And there we go. Parts are bringing themselves a bit uh, pointlessly. There you go. And moving themselves to the mortar, which quickly lands a good hit. We got an HD5 now for Overlord. Interesting choice here. It's not like Crazy Brit has a lot of heavier armor, so. I mean, the HD5 seems a bit like Overkiller. We could just go on for HD6s, just more T34 and 6s, or, you know, some infantry. So I'm uh, less confident that is the best move there. It's not a terrible move, it's just not think a good move either. Sort of in between. Parts moving in there, moving ahead, gonna try and creep up on the Grenadiers with a grenade and some other nastiness. And here in the center, more parts moving up, we got the maximum there again, striking forwards. Mortify landing all over the place. 30 points left by for Crazy Bit. 30 points, h 5 almost down there for Overlord. Panzer going to the Ostrom here, fighting to grab the center victory point. Good pop counterattack tactics again here. Smoke's going on the maximum there again. Good use of smoke by, by Crazy Bit. Good use of smoke there to neutralize the machine guns. Very good use there. Definitely deserves a comment there. Maximum there, firing rate, veteran, 310 kills. And there you go, almost got the maximum. I mean, one thing Bobby could have done is actually drive the Puma up here, deploy the smoke screen that way, covering up there. I mean, most people only use this Panzer's attention to cover up their own vehicle to get out of there, but you can actually use him that way, screen for other troops as well, which tends to get the uh, uh, list done. But there you go, Asia Fire Rhyme there, and he immediately takes it from the Pack 40, the Panzer out there, can only field sick. Max not going to be a problem, Panzer's need to achieve, he needs to smoke the other Maxima as well. Still, he's keeping. Um, Defeat that they stalling out for time. Still no tech up though. Still no tech up. Maxim there hammering away. Armored car almost efficiency one. Just regular mortify here to silence the maximum this time around. Sending it running away and again there we go. Counter tech tactics wearing off. He fit forth and repaired. He's going for a second Katusha. Holy moly. But again, noting that Overlord has very little actual infantry left. Very, very little actual infantry left. So again, he's rather painting himself into corner here if he's not careful. Again, I mean, barely any troops there. I mean, technically, I wouldn't even call those regular infantry again, just a regular, but still. Not looking good there for Lord. He's focusing very heavily on the armor again. They can take points, but that's something they can't do so easily. Maximum decrude again, and there you go, second Katusha out. So he's really laying up here for something big. A sledgehammer blow versus Crazy Brit. And again, trying to silence those pack 40s. In this case, not having a lot of luck here with the rockets. Though, of course, the second one might be able to finish off the job. And there you go, second volley from the Stalin organ, as it was known by the Germans. Placement pack 40 on the way there. Even though he's moving up to grab the first one here. Or still recruiting it. Immediately. And there we go. He's charging forwards here. He's charging forwards. Right into the pack. The Pumol's joining in there a bit as well. There we go. Tag weak point off. Blinding one of the T-34s. Good work. T-34 down. Puma there almost knocked out. H5 for some reason rushing ahead there. Got the pack 40 there. But at the same time as H5 took a lot of damage there. Another T-34 there for Overlord, another one, Panzer's rushing forward, they might try and grab the pack forward, they're right under his nose, there you go, denied, good work there, this time around he does wreck it in time. Another T-34 halfway down there for Overlord. But a crazy bit and this pushes ahead, again there's just no infantry to really sort of hold the line for him. Command tank, Puma, I need repairs, but there you go, Puma is fixed up. Still no tag up, I think. Is he just planning more Pumas? And another T-34 there. So he's now got three T-34s, two Katus, one issue to five again here versus Oval. Crazy Brett almost got the Puma there. Which now gains Brett's two. two. Crazy 
Almost got on the T-Fed Force Pack before setting up there. Pantrix on the Pioneer doing some damage. I actually upgraded his Pants Gun with Pantrix as well. Bit of a shame, but then again, there's not so much infantry left, so in this regard, it makes more sense. And there you go, got one of the T-Fed Force there with his Puma, I think. No, that's the Pack 4 they're hitting up. Good work. They lost their Furber Lord. Bang grenade here, get back to And wipe the maxim. T for taking heavy damage again. There's no anything to work with the tanks. So that's it. There's nothing to screen your scout ahead for the tanks as well. Trying to silence on the pack 40 again with the Katrushes. A murderous barrage there being laid down by both of them. And they're just not really hitting the mark, are they? In fact, they get spotted here by the Panzer on the Deers. And there we go. Got one of the Katrushes. Got one of them. Oh, the Overlord's not reacting. He's not reacting. The Panthers continue forwards. Ah, going for one of the T-34s instead of the Katrusha. They want to get it finished off. But still, he might be able to get the job done. Oh, retreats, retreats. If he'd supported that with a Puma, that could have been, I think, a lot more dangerous as an Overlord. He could probably gun the Katrusha and at least one T-34. Now, he's saying the Puma again. It's not happening, you know, a bit more alone. And, yeah, there's a higher look now. Losing it. There you go. Pop smokes. You know, it's gone for full doctoral bingo there. Gets the HD5. Gets the HD5. Main gun is out. Main gun is out. Oh, Lord, though, has barely anything left. He's trying to use the smoke here to clear through and uh, abandoned. He's going to have to wreck it, though, because he's got nothing to recruit with. And there we go. Puma completely wrecked. Still not take it, though, for crazy bread. He's easily done at this stage. No, they can't attack tactics. 13 points left versus Overlord. 13 points left. Another Puma there, though, for the Spare for Bandit Spielman. And we got. Yeah, just more parts here for Overlord. He's going to try and harass the maneuver here. Maybe hit some of those victory points. Or something about. He should probably consider laying down some machine gun bunkers around some of them. Or some S mines. We can act to defend them here versus his opponent. Got the Puma sending out. There we go, almost got the Parsons wiped. Another Katrusha barrage there from the surviving Katrusha rocket launcher. Blowing apart trees, the road, but no Germans. Looks like he caught Fritz there. 20 kills, they're not bad. Two kills on Owen. Both roughly halfway next to the next veterancy level. Back here, nothing further going on there. Still no tag up again, he seems very just hooked into the doctrine by now again, in part due to those really horrific early Puma losses. Could lay down some mines, some S mines, Tele mines could offer a lot there. And to catching another T-34 with a Tele mine, I think could win the game right then and there for Crazy Bread. Though again, the fight has already gone on for quite a bit of while, so saying it's you know right then and there is you know, a bit misleading. At this stage. And again, you've sort of seen if she ever dance tank pounds again. They can't really just do much here from either. Another T fit for Overlord. Still no infantry. Still no infantry. Yeah, oh, never mind. He has actually gone for a single conscious squad. So there's two conscious squads in this fight so far, but no penal troopers. Crazy Brent now control most of the map. They're 10 points versus 103. Keep it on there. So no one's got the house collapsed and the Ostrovan is dead. They do fall back rapidly. And another Puma here for Crazy Bread. Crashing the house as they sort of brush past it. And there goes Ostrovan rushed off. There you go, 30, 34. A full T-34 platoon there for... Overlord. Puma shoots, gets a good hit there, gets a good hit with his 15 minute gun. Second hit, command tank supporting. 73 points left here for Overlord. His lone country, what they're tagging ahead. 
Command tank ready to pull. So we've got T-34 trying to break through, but there you go, taking hits from both Pumas there. Almost got one of the T-34s there. And Command tank here rushing ahead. Puma almost knocked out. Command tank can get a lot of fire. Rocket fire. There you go, got the Puma. Pack 40 down as well. Catastrophic dam damage here to Crazy Bird. Catastrophic damage. It's only a bit of luck. Is uh, one of the T-34s is out. There's only two here to break through. And so far, the other tank is not very cool. But again, there's the hero here. The veteran U3 on a rampage. There you go. Got the Puma damage engine. Command tank right behind it. But the T-Fed force makes us have a right high rate of fine. There you go. Gets the command tank as well. Second T-Fed force following up here. 10 versus 34 points left. Going to be close. He's hitting the southern victory point. But none of the other two. Need to get the T-Fed up here and begin grabbing it. Use the secure mode, but at the same time without infantry screen, that's going to mean he's going to be vulnerable then to the attacking infantry. He can't really do that either, but he has to. And faced with such a dilemma, their overlord just pulled back completely, despite being down to 23 points. Another Puma for Crazy Bear. They're ready to roll ahead. Pack forward recruit by Ostrom. Ow! T-34 down, the ace there, the hero of the Soviet Union, he's 26 kills, virtually 3, but barely operable. 18 points left here. 17. Going in there, he's sending the Puma head, he doesn't care about the anti-tank pattern. Oh, shot bounces, shot bounces. Pounds now almost wiped out here, and annihilated. Uh, the chief head from in, I think he's. I don't. I, I'm not sure what's happening. Now the is being ignored. He just wants that T-34 dead. There we go. Pantry Shex lighted on fire. And there you go. Maximum East here trying to get the point. Ten versus ten points. Kuma going to the base here. Gets the T-34. Only abandoned though. Katrisha also down. Wipe the unit there in the south here. Ostrom message conscripts there. Counter-attack tactics being utilized to so quickly seize the points. There we go. T-34 finished off. T-34 finished off. And uh, there we go. Countries were wiped. Panzers arriving. Strain to the Grenadiers. Virtually three. But at this point, there is no hope. But he still does it. Grenade. And with this, I think it's safe to say who's won this again. Just lamps to quickly seize. Oh, he's hitting the central victory point as well. Trying to buy more time, but it is futile. It is futile. And there you go. He just throws them in left and right now. But again, there's just so little time left. Three points, two points, one point. Grenade off. And there you go. GG. Game over. Victory for Crazy Bit. Rather hard fought battle. A lot of back and forth. Looked very rough there for Crazy Bit. Again, Overlord's uh, erratic and aggressive strategy initially worked out, but again, there was also a flaw within the force composition. He initially again very powerful as the game progresses. He has to defend. It sort of runs into issues because the partners aren't very good defenders. So in that regard, Crazy Bit will slowly surely be able to push back. Despite again losing a lot of Pumas in very silly manners there early on versus Overlord, he was still able to sort of turn the situation around because Overlord he just had infantry. But Overlord just had irregular infantry that way, slowly but slowly turned the situation around. Factoring that Overlord made not very good use of his tanks, he's getting just to tap from any points instead, just rely on them like a huge slab of iron. Right ahead, which Overlord made use of Crazy Bit's anti tank guns, and that way deal with it. So, some issues there with Overlord in sort of terms of force composition, but also armor tactics, allowed Crazy Bit sort of uh, slowly but surely gain back the match here. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, one subscribe to your friends, share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay and find some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dancing. Cheers. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you all tomorrow for another turning episode. Bye.